Professor Keza Kadala, Vice Chancellor, University of Dar es Salaam. The Regional Commissioner of Ayusha, our host here. Professor Kenya Maboko, Deputy Vice Chancellor, University of Dar es Salaam. And the Chairperson of the Local Organizing Committee. Dr. Jeremiah Nengoasa, Deputy Executive Secretary of WMO. Her Excellency Mrs. Nolosime Roda Peace, Commissioner of Rural Economy and Agriculture, UNECA. Dr. Kassim Asroa. Director of the World Climate Research Program, WCRP. Dr. Seleshi Dekele and Dr. Arami Toho, African Climate Conference Co-Chairs for 2013. Dr. Chris Yanda, Director of the Center for Climate Change Studies at University of Dar es Salaam. Member of the Diplomatic Corps, Distinguished Conference Participants, Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me at the outset to express my most sincere appreciation for the honor you granted me to officiate the opening of this conference. I am pleased to know that the conference is organized by the World Climate Research Program and the African Climate Policy Center, and that is, it is hosted by the University of Pakistan. It is also my pleasure and honor to family welcome to Tanzania the conference organizers and all the participants. I wish to assure you that the government of the United Republic of Tanzania recognizes the enormous significance of this conference. It is our understanding that the conference is meant to provide an opportunity for the exchange of knowledge and serious deliberation of climate change and development planning in the continent. We trust that the opportunity will be utilized well to ensure first and foremost the expansion of the scope of existing knowledge and the potentially disastrous phenomena of climate change, and secondly, enhancement of the intimate collaborations among African climate scientists and development partners. This unique assembly will foster the worldwide efforts to better understand the nature of the phenomena in question and its consequences on life in general and human development in particular. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to know that one of the anticipated outcomes of this meeting is to bring African development planners closer to the realities of climate change emanating from scientific research. This intent has an obvious global importance because of the wide rift that exists between the frontiers of knowledge and thinking about decision makers. I must hasten to say that such a divide is even deeper and threatening in the African context. You are desired to narrow down the gap between new knowledge in the realm of climate change and decision making is therefore most notable and sincerely welcome. I genuinely commend all of you for the decision to bring together African climate researchers and scientists on one hand, and decision makers on the other. This illustrates the seriousness of your desire to narrow the gap in question. The prospect of successful realization of the core objective of the conference is heightened by the fact that this meeting is designed to pursue a clear agenda of one, assessing the state of knowledge of the African climate system, Two, identifying current gaps in climate knowledge, 
three, developing a framework for mainstreaming climate information into decision making, and four, defining and driving an African agenda for the future climate research that will inform adaptation decisions. This is indeed a highly promising agenda. And it is, of course, my sincere hope that your aspirations will be fulfilled. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now common knowledge that climate change is an enormous threat to humanity and the world at large. It is a huge challenge not only to the world's sustainable development, but also to the very survival of the planet Earth. We are informed through the available scientific evidence that as of now, gigantic efforts are needed to reduce the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide to a far lower level than that currently exists. We are told that this is necessary for the rate of negative climate change is to be lowered and the consequences of the imminent rapid global warming of water. To date, attempts to confront the climate crisis and ensure that future generations are not condemned to an irreversible catastrophe have been short. Even when viewed in the most optimistic light, the pledges that are currently being made internationally to reduce emissions will not effectively mitigate global warming and save their people's livelihoods. Scientific reports have persistently pointed out the survival of the planet Earth requires cutting down greenhouse gases emissions to far lower levels than currently being contemplated by the world. However, as you will all agree, this is easier said than done. The greater value of environmental sustainability and the human desire for rapid economic gain have always stood in contradiction to each other. A lot of concerted effort is therefore needed to go around this contradiction and effectively reduce emissions that contribute to very global warming and irreversible damage to our planet Earth. It is necessary to take multiple approaches in this neighborhood, but basic to all efforts will be a sustained endeavor to update and advance our knowledge of the phenomenon of climate change and its consequences to sustainable development. This is because other approaches, such as building of public awareness and diplomacy, will largely depend or successful establishment of the value of the problem at hand. It is for this reason that we consider this convergence of researchers and decision makers to be an important occasion for the future of our continent and for sustainable development in general. Ladies and gentlemen, the dangers of climate change are especially threatening to the prosperity of Africa. The continent a home of over 900 million people and represents 40% 40 40 of the world's population. Yet it is the only continent where food production per capita is decreasing, where hunger and malnutrition affect at least one in every three people. African agriculture has for decades been faced with multiple challenges ranging from low productivity to poor or non existence of markets. And now the associated impact of climate change and their evolution. Millions of Africans are already vulnerable to food insecurity and malnutrition. Malnourishment. This is particularly evident in rural areas where people depend primarily on agriculture for food and income. Despite attempts at the green revolution in individual countries, 
Cop yields in sub Saharan Africa have hardly changed over the past 40 years. And cereal production per capita is steadily declining. The projected shortfall of cereal is estimated at 88.7 million tons by 2025. It is obvious that any increase in the pace of negative impacts of climate change will have serious repercussions on food security and human survival on the continent. This delicate situation makes Africa stand a greater risk of being badly affected by global climate change. Your contribution toward the mitigation of this danger are therefore sincerely welcome. The situation in the continent also points to the fact that the adaptation in the agricultural sector to come to consequences of climate change are not a matter of choice, but an imperative. As already noted, environmental scientists have a crucial role to play in fulfilling this necessity. Ladies and gentlemen, in the intellectual and developmental grounds, the United Republic of Tanzania participates in the negotiations meeting in order to contribute towards meaningful changes in the world's modalities for environmental stewardship. More recently, Tanzania recently participated in the Intergovernmental Panel Climate Change, IPCC, which is an intergovernmental body for modern generation. Professor Yada is very active in many international fora in matters pertaining to environment. We are most grateful for his contribution to this aspect of boosting knowledge and understanding of the environment of climate change in Tanzania and in Africa in general. The MBC has also been interested and continues to coordinate a number of important functions concerning climate change on behalf of Africa. Africa and the least development countries, these include coordination of subsidiary border implementation SBI on behalf of Africa and a project known as reducing emission from deforestation and forest degradation rate on behalf of MBCs. Tanzania is also chair for the subsidiary body for scientific and technological advice, SBSTA. The country is therefore well placed and plays an important role in pushing for of the interests of Africa and the least developed countries in the United Nations Convention of Climate Change negotiation. In recognition of the fact that climate change challenges are best handled by using a global approach. Tanzania provides a shared vision that unites the countries of the world in building inclusive, fair, and effective climate change negotiations, mitigation, and adaptation regime. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish, I wish to wind up my remarks by once again thanking you for the invitation to be the guest of honor in this open ceremony, and also wish the participants who are here from outside our board a happy and a pleasant stay in Russia and in Tanzania in Tanzania. I sincerely hope that you find time in your life or time schedule to explore the beauty of Tanzania, even within the confines of the city of Russia. Mr. Molongo is here with an RC and can give you all the information that is necessary to visit all the most interesting places in this region of ours in Russia. But as it probably been advised by our Previous speakers, Professor Yanda Aji has to eat as much meat as we can. And Professor Wukadrugandara cautioning us for those of you who might be prone to gout and possibly other ailments, you can find, you can find a better choice of what to do. But nevertheless, don't miss the opportunity to enjoy yourself while you are in Russia. Russia is a present country, is a present region. It's absolutely very friendly people that you can find here. And the 
and more interesting and exciting places are not very far from here. The Goro Goro, the Serengeti, if time permits, definitely after the conference. Please do not hesitate to visit all these places. I wish you that you have a very pleasant stay here in Tanzania, and, and I wish I could give you that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is you or not, it is now my honest pleasure to declare the African Climate Conference 2013 officially open. Thank you for your attention.